I do that to get the audio to peak uh, so I can see the spike in the waveforms when I'm dropping them into my video editor. Um, so now, let's get going. Uh, I'm going to be providing a tutorial here on the Tascam DR40 and using it with a Sony condenser microphone. I'll show you the two items. Bam, Tascam DR40, Sony condenser microphone. Uh, I give this a five stars. I, I've been really happy with the quality, uh, really clean audio, um, little if any noise. Uh, same with this, the, the quality I've, I've been impressed with. Uh, I give it a four star rating though, just because it's not real user friendly, it's not real intuitive, which is why I'm doing this video. So, and then you'll notice I'm also wearing a, a, a lavalier mic here. Um, this is something totally different. This is the uh, Roadlink um, Filmmaker Kit. Highly recommend this. I love it. And I'm using this, uh, you know, it's a wireless mic, which is kind of ironic because what do you see here? A wire. But it's going down to this uh, transmitter, which is wirelessly sending the signal to this receiver, three and a half millimeter which uh, I adapted with an XLR plug-in to get to my Zoom H6 recorder also known as a preamp. Been a huge fan of these of this setup. Um, love love the Zoom H6. Much more user friendly and check out this awesome screen here. You can really monitor the audio levels and um, I, th I think it works great in almost every condition. The only uh, barrier I foresee is shooting in uh, harsh uh, midday sunlight. might be hard to read um, an electronic screen like that. Um, but big fan. Anyway, we're not here for that. That'll be in another video. For now, uh, the Tascam DR40 um, takes uh, three um, double A's. They seem to last, uh, I'd say they last about six hours of continuous recording. And uh, SD card slot, uh, I have a 32 gig card in here, which is huge in the audio world. Um, that'll give me hours and hours, probably close to 100 hours of audio before you'd have to erase or reformat it. Um, and then this takes um, a single AA battery, and there is no on and off, so I recommend just removing the battery when you're done, and I always shoot interviews with a fresh battery. Um, which gets into one other thing, um, there's a, where it says external in here, you have a few options. Um, you see, I have it set up right there in the middle for external in, mic, uh, and that implies that I have my own battery, which I do have a double A in there. Um, if you want to go mic and phantom, phantom means that this is going to be sending power to this. And I just don't want this thing to work harder than it has to. And, and a, a double A battery is not that expensive, so I just... I keep them each powered uh, separately. Okay, before I fire this up, it's worth mentioning uh, the connection I have here. This is an XLR setup, and XLR is really two, m most audio setups are going to use one of two uh, hookups. It's going to be either XLR or a three and a half millimeter, like a headphone uh, sort of plug-in. You're going to get much cleaner audio, less noise using an XLR. And it just attaches by popping it. And a detacher, you just press that lever. That's intuitive enough. Okay, now press and hold. Power it up. Okay, while well that's loading, let's just review everything I, all the options we have here on the side. Um, so I keep it in the middle on mic, and you can hold it if you just want to lock your settings, if you're worried you're going to bump it. I've never had to put it on hold. And then you have your input levels, 
And we'll get into that in just a minute. First off, uh, here's our menu. Nothing's going on. Uh, let's go into record mode. Bam. Now look at what we have here. Burn that into your memory. Four channel, external in, half. Okay, so that means we're going to be recording on this channel, these channels up here, and then this channel down there. And they're going to be two different audio files, but they'll be named um, accordingly so you'll know, and, and the metadata is going to be identical. So you're not going to have a problem matching those two up. Um, okay, to get out of the menu, you just press the stop button here. And and then w before you start recording, filming an interview, you're going to want to check your levels. So with everything attached, you see the light here is on for four channels. That's a plus. Um, go ahead and press record once. And you'll notice the seconds aren't rolling. It's not recording. And down here, you can see where the, the audio, you can see how it's moving. So, bam, and a snap. We'll get it to peak. You'll see that light just went off. Yeah. So you don't want that to happen. If, if you're filming a, a louder speaker, you may have to drop the input levels down a little bit to avoid it from peaking. So just look at, look at the levels there, and then you could just adjust it accordingly right there, your input levels. I like to have my audio files on the quieter side. I think it's easier to bring them up and post. If your audio peaks, there's just, there's really no way to recover it. Um, it's just going to sound bad. No matter what you do, it's going to sound altered in some way. Now I'll go ahead and do a sample recording. So let's attach this to my other collar. Get it as close to the mouth as you can. Check, check, check. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. They're all going out about the same level. Check, check. Okay, and the one thing that has burned me in the past is you need to press record twice. So that first record just activates, you know, the audio file so you can uh, monitor the levels. But you got to press it a second time to be truly rolling. And you'll know you're rolling because you'll see the seconds ticking. Okay, in this sample, I'll talk about uh, the Tree Fort Music Festival. Tree Fort, incredible time, uh, usually end of March over Boise State spring break, brings hundreds of bands, dozen different venues just come to life, and and. It's just, it's a great time to be in Boise. And the music, every year, it's a festival of discovery. I absolutely love it. Okay, bam, that gives us about 35 seconds of audio. So we'll go ahead and stop it. And then power it down, press and hold. And one other thing I didn't mention is, uh, if, if someone has a zipper or if this will be flaking against something, that you're going to want to avoid that. If this like flicks, if something touches it, oh, your, your audio is going to spike. It's going to peak. Um, so just keeping this uh, unobstructed. Uh, it's got this little sock on it, so it can take a little bit of wind. If you have winds blowing over fitting, um, you're, you're going to need to mitigate that in some other way. Perhaps you can turn it internal, uh, some other barrier to muffle it. Okay, now there was, there was one thing we really needed to get into in post. So, so many computers, pretty much all Macs, have SD card readers. So these are super user-friendly to work with. And I'll show you what what to do with these files in post. And the reason why I'm getting into the post-production with this is there's an issue, you know, because this attaches to, you know, in this case I chose the left, L, um, your, it records, this, this file is going to be in mono, you know, so, so if you play it on your speakers, only your left speaker is going to have any sound. So in post, 
we need to convert it to stereo. And I'm going to show you how to do that. The audio from the condenser microphone is recorded in mono form. Well, we need to convert it to stereo so it plays out of both speakers. So I've taken the SD card out of the Tascam DR40, the recorder, also known as a preamp. And uh, the back of my Mac here has an SD card slot, so I'm just going to go ahead and pop it in. And there are some free audio editing uh, softwares out there. The one that I use, I actually pay for, it's part of the whole package, the Adobe Creative Suite. So I use Audition. So first things first, let's go ahead and create a new folder. I always give it a, uh, the title with the date. Um, I start with the year first. Tutorial. Okay, bam, there we go. So I got my empty folder here and I'm gonna take the audio files I recorded, and you'll find all the audio files under uh, music, and they're recorded in WAV format. That's how I have it set up right now. And and like I mentioned before, uh, they record on two different channels. So you have the one on top getting the stereo, the ambient sound, and then you have that one from the XLR plug that went straight to the condenser, Sony condenser microphone. Okay, so there they are. Go ahead and just eject that SD card. Well, that's ejecting. I'll fire up Audition. Okay, SD card is out. Bam. Okay, well you got Audition. You can go to new and create a new audio file. I think it works just fine to take the audio files directly and drop them. So first, let's find out which one we recorded on the top, the ambient sound, and which one we record with the condenser microphone. And we'll be able to find that easily from one, just listening to them. Okay. So we know this came from the top one, the ambient sound, because look, we have, we have the left and right, the stereo sound. Okay, so we select all under effects, um, uh, amplitude and compression. I like to do, uh, start with the speech volume leveler, and I keep it around minus 50 and leveling amount around 50, dynamic range around at 50. Boost low signal, so those quiet mumbles bring that sound up a little. Bam, apply. You can see it brought my wavelengths up a little bit. That's almost good. In fact, yeah, I, I like getting my audio between minus 9 and minus 6. I can bring it up more in my video editor in Final Cut. So after I alter an audio file, I save it, labeling it as such. So we'll go ahead and save this. And at the very end of the file, I do a little underscore, and I'll just say aud audition enhanced, bam. And by default, it goes right back to the same exact folder. I'll export it as a WAV file. I think WAV is the best quality. Bam. Okay, done. Now we need to mess with that other file. So I, I find it easier, honestly, to just quit Audition and reopen it with a blank slate. Okay, now this is the important stuff. Okay, so here's the original raw uh, files. So we know this one is the stereo, the one from on top for the ambient sound. And we can see that we labeled it according, accordingly. You can see, bam. So now this one that ends in 3-4, that must be the condenser microphone one. So let's drop that in. Bam. Look. See, we only have one audio 
uh, channel recorded. Nothing down low. This is pretty low. We're definitely going to need to bring this up. Uh, first things first, we got to take this from just the left channel. Uh, we need to make both channels left and right. Uh, we need to make it stereo. This is technically stereo, but the right stereo is, you can see, nothing. So we select all and um, this just so happens to be under my favorites, but e easy to find the help button. You can search most anything there. So under, uh, I, I convert it to mono. You know, I just learned through trial and error. This is how you do it. You have to convert it all to mono first, bam. And now we can convert it to stereo. There we go. Whoa, we really need to boost these signals. First thing is I like to go to speech volume leveler and I keep everything about the middle. Target volume range minus 15, leveling amount 50, target dynamic range 50. Boost low signals apply. Let's see where that gets us. That boosted it a little bit. We need more. So I go to amplify and let's, I think we might need more than seven, but let's see what seven will do. Yeah, we're going to need more. So I just go ahead and undo that and do it again with the proper amount. So I think we're going to need more like, let's see if 20 is sufficient. Oh, that's a little much. I don't like it going beyond six. So 15 should do it. Sure enough, now, now that we've converted it to stereo and we've brought up the low signals and we put it in a range that we're comfortable with, I like keeping it you know, between minus 12 and minus six. So right around minus nine is just about perfect. Uh, we can always bring it up a little more in our video editor. Um, so let's see how it turned out. Let's hear how it turned out. Okay, in this sample, I'll talk about uh, the Tree Fort Music Festival. Tree Fort, incredible time, uh, usually end of March over Boise State spring break, brings hundreds of bands, dozen different venues just come to life, and, and it's just, it's a great time to be in Boise. And the music, every year, it's a festival of discovery. I absolutely love it. Uh, 